Hello my crafty tribe, this is Artsy Maddie and let's get creative. So today I have these seven hexagon frames, they're mirrors from Dollar Tree and I was lucky enough to find seven of them between two stores and then I found these, these beautiful pink bee bags, they're like reusable shopping bags and they're from Dollar Tree as well. I love the pattern of them so I'm just trying to make the most of the material. I took the bags apart I took the frames apart so these are the mirrors just flipped over and then I just traced them out onto this bag now it's okay that um, they're not perfect like I'm gonna use where the fold is and I'm gonna match up at the top where it's short material because I do plan on embellishing these so they don't need to be perfect I'm okay with like a little bit of wrinkles and stuff because I'm gonna cover that up and then I found this beautiful Welcome to our hive design. It's by turnup.co and they have a beautiful website and an Etsy store full of awesome designs. So if you have a Cricut or a silhouette, you can just print these out and just like have it as a sticker, which would be amazing, but I don't have a Cricut. So I'm going to show you how to do it without. So just cutting this out, I wanted as few bees on this middle one as possible, just so that the wording would show up and not be too distracting. So on this bag, on this side of this bag, I just kind of worked it out so that I would only have the one bee in the center. So now to attach them to the mirrors, I'm using the backs of the mirrors and some spray adhesive, and then just putting down the plastic bag on top and it worked like a charm. It worked out great. So I did them all like that, all seven. Got them all attached. Now here you'll see just at the top, I just used some of the scraps to line it up and cover it up. And you'll see how I'm going to embellish them. So not to worry, get the most out of your bags. You can use those little wrinkles and do some matching if you need to. So for the embellishments, one of the things I'm going to be using is this placemat. So this is just a plastic placemat from Dollar Tree. And I, I can't remember, it came in gold and one other color. I just picked the gold, but I want it white. So I'm using primer just because that's what I have on hand. If you have chalk paint, I'm sure that would be just fine. Then I'm also embellishing with these little wooden hexagons that I got from Dollarama. So I know a lot of you don't have access to Dollarama. You could totally just cut these out of cardboard. I know it's a little bit tedious, but I think this project's worth it. There's a little bit of tedious stuff in here, but hopefully you guys will agree that it was worth it. So I just want a little bit of embellishment and I want it kind of random on each hexagon. So for each one, I treated it separately and did them each just a little bit differently. So you'll see here, I show you a couple different ones that I did. Um, I tried out this spray adhesive from Dollar Tree and it's a name brand. I think it's called Beacon something, but I was impressed. It's holding up fairly well. Um, it doesn't get a lot of wear on this project. Like they're kind of held in by the frame, but I was very impressed with it. So just in case you haven't tried that out yet, it's probably worth giving a try. So then I'm just laying these out just to get them pleasing to the eye. So. I want them random. I don't want everyone to be the same. I know some people like that. So if you like that, go for it. Um, but I'm just trying to make them each just a little bit unique and a little bit different because the B pattern is a little bit different on each one as well. So for this one, like I just wrapped it around the two sides, the corner there. And then the other one was kind of the length of one side. So just to show you kind of the difference. And I thought maybe I should slide them up out of the frame, but that didn't work as well. So it's a little bit tight in that frame with that placemat, but it does work. So again, just trying out some different patterns, how I want to lay them out. I was just leaving little tiny spaces between each little hexagon. And I love tacky glue. I'm sure you guys do too if you're a crafter. It's kind of tried and true stuff. And it worked great with this reusable plasticky material. Oh, I guess I show you one more. <laughs> so again, just a little bit of a different pattern. So just a little bit up on the one side and the length of the other side. I know it's hard to be random for some people and you think that your eye wants a pattern, but it's almost more pleasing to our eye to have a bit of randomness, just like nature. 
like although there's patterns in nature, there's also a lot of randomness to it. If you try and kind of think of it that way. So then I am just going to use some carbon paper and trace this design down onto my middle hexagon. So the middle of the frame. So just going over that quickly with some carbon paper. This um, company, I was looking at their other designs. They have some beautiful, beautiful round sunflower designs. And I'm kind of wondering if they're too finicky for a cricket or a silhouette. You guys will have to let me know if there's anyone that's kind of like an expert with cricket or silhouette, if those designs would be like too thin and too finicky or if they would work. I'm not really sure. I do have a friend that likes to use Cricut, so maybe I can ask her as well. But if any of you want to go to that website, and just kind of have a look. The designs are just beautiful. I love them all. <laughs> and it's a him. It's a, a male designer. He has a great eye, great patterns and designs. So just tracing out this um, whole design here, this is an oil based Sharpie pen. And I usually enjoy it, except wah, wah, <laughs> it like burped up a bunch of paint onto the project. And so now I think I have Sharpie issues. I'm going to have trust issues with these pens. So I tried rubbing alcohol. It didn't work. But this goof off, I don't know if you guys have ever used it. It's for like any mess ups with latex paint or house paint. And that worked like a charm. So it's kind of always something good to have on hand, I think. It's just called Goof Off. It comes in a bunch of different, like, like a little pour canister. That was the graffiti remover one um, that we had from a long time ago. But any of those will work. So now I was just trying to fill in the wings with some white, with an, a white oil-based Sharpie marker. And I think because the black hadn't had time to cure yet, like it was dry but not cured, they kind of mixed together. So just learn from that, I guess. Don't put the white beside the black or you're going to end up with gray. So I just waited till that dried and then I just went over everything with just some white acrylic paint. So the design that he had done had these little bits of white through it and I kind of like that detail. So I just copied it onto here as well. And then just went over the white on the wings as well. I just love this pink with the bees. You guys will have to let me know, did you see this pattern? Do you like it? I hope Dollar Tree makes more of it. Maybe even next year if they bring it back with some other stuff, I think that would be great. So just laying them all out now, just seeing how they all work together, kind of flipping them around just to see what's most pleasing to the eye. So just play with it a bit and see what you like. And then I just wanted to cut a strong kind of piece to have it all pieced together on the back because the frames they're not exactly straight up and down like they almost have a little bit of a slope to them so I'm just using a piece of foam core black foam core this is from Dollar Tree as well and then I'm just going to mount all the frames to it they all have that cardboard back so just the hot glue I thought would be great and it's holding up fine it's been up for a couple weeks now with no problem on the top, I did use a little bit of um, tacky glue as well, just because those two top ones are not going to be fastened at the top. So I thought they might have a little bit more kind of weight and pressure on them. So I just added a little bit of tacky glue to those, but it's holding up fine. So this worked out good. And then I just attached a rope to the back to hang it with. Just easy peasy. I'm sure you've seen this before, just with some hot glue. And then I just used some cardboard to reinforce it with. And just hold it till it dries. And then I just wanted to make some kind of stylized bees to just add to it a little bit, because that's what I do, I guess. I'm a little bit over the top with the details. So of course, this isn't necessary by any means, but I just thought it was cute. So I am just priming these sweet little ladybugs to turn them into some sweet little bees. So for yellow, I know I've said this a few times lately, but for yellow, it's always best to have a nice light base coat, um, nice solid light base to work on because yellow is always a little bit transparent. So that's what I did there. And then for the wings, I wanted them to be a little bit more stylized like the bees on the bag. So I actually traced 
just a little bit smaller of a wing, um, just exactly like the bees on the bag. So they have kind of that stylized longer wing and this material is actually interfacing for sewing. So if you've sewn it all or know a sewer, they will have this and you just need like a little scrap of it to make the wings. Um, otherwise you could always just use some plastic or vellum or just kind of whatever you can find. The plastic you could just kind of put like a transparent white, maybe some white paint and Mod Podge on it. And then I cut out all the wings because <laughs> I'm crafty and that's what we do, right? We're always cutting and pasting and gluing and whatever. So put on your favorite YouTuber and cut out some wings. And then I just put the two little dots of glue. This tacky glue is great. Once it's cured, they're on there pretty darn good. I haven't had any trouble with them at all. So just the tweezers helped. I would suggest some tweezers. It makes it easier to pick them up and get them stuck into that glue. And I just did a thinner line too on these bees. If you've seen the other bees we did before, they had kind of a wider stripe. So I just did a thinner black stripe on these just to emulate the bees that are on the bag design. And then the fun part, you just get to stick them on. So if there is any little paint residues on the side, you just kind of run your fingernail along them and it cleans it right up. Comes right off and the stickers are actually very sticky. Like they've been sticking on no problem. And this is the finished product. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. And then today's video is part of the Sunday Fun Day, one of my favorite challenges. I love this challenge because you have so much freedom. So it's always a fun playlist too. You never know what you're going to see. It's always hosted by Jani and Diane every month. They are Deco Easy. Love their channel. Huge fan. And Trish and Kay are the new co-hosts. So they've been co-hosting every month. They are the Crafting Cousins. I absolutely adore them. These are two of my favorite channels. So I'll have links to them in my description box. If you haven't checked them out, you need to do that. And I will also have a link to the playlist. So this bag is also from Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find this. I saw it as soon as I went in the first set of doors and I kind of squealed and embarrassed myself and ran right over to this bag and I think a couple people looked at me like I was crazy but I'm very excited about it. So I just spray mounted it to some hardboard. So this you can get at the hardware store in 1 8 inch or 3 8 inch and it's very cheap and you can get them to cut it down there or just use the Dollar Tree signs like everybody does as well. That works just as good too. So I'm just mounting it down with more of that Elmer's spray adhesive. A Little bit stinky, but not too bad. I don't mind it too bad. I just laid out some plastic just to catch any overspray. And then I'm gonna be framing it with this. So you can get 50 of these four foot lengths of lath, L-A-T-H from Home Depot. This is a Canadian price. So in the States, it's gonna be even less. And I cut some of them in half. So down the middle to be the outer frame. And then I'm just using the inner frame, just laying them flat. So the outer ones are cut down the middle and stood on end. And then the middle, the inner frame is just laying flat. So I just cut them all down to fit the hardboard, just to fit the, the size of hardboard that I had. So I won't give you the exact measurements because like you can just kind of eye up your bag and decide how big you want it. Or even if you look for a frame at the thrift store, Sometimes you can find a frame that would be about this size, like for a piece of art or whatever. And maybe you could even just use that to frame it up. So I just used some black chalk paint for the outer frame and just some yellow straight to the raw wood for the inner frame. I didn't mind it showing the wood grain and looking kind of like a stain. So then on top of that, I just want to mix a little bit of glaze. So glaze is it keeps your paint wet longer, like it has a longer open time. That's kind of what it's for. And then I just want to mix in like a richer yellow to go on top. So it's going to be transparent, but kind of a deeper, richer yellow. And then I just want to do like a paint technique on top of this yellow frame. So you'll see here what I mean in just a second. 
So I'm using a dabber. Um, one of the, these are from Dollar Tree, these little foam dabbers. They are very handy to have. Highly suggest those too. And I just cover all these little um, bubble wrap bubbles with some of this yellow glaze. And then you can kind of see in the light there, so it's transparent. It's not like kind of an in-your-face pattern, just a very subtle pattern, but I thought it would kind of look like honeycomb. So you guys let me know. Do you think that's a worthwhile step? It's very subtle. It is very subtle, but I just thought it was kind of fun and just wanted to experiment with it if I could get something looking like honeycomb. Oh, I show you all four. <laughs> So I found glaze on Amazon and I have used it in projects in the past and I think I will use it more in the future. I was a little bit worried because it was hard to find in my city in Calgary where I live. So I was worried that you guys wouldn't be able to find it, but I have found some on Amazon. So I'm probably going to use it a bit more just because I really love glaze. I think you can get some great techniques with it. So I will have a link to the glaze in my description box as well. So for this, I was just using a combination of wood glue for strength once it dries and then just a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place while the wood, wood glue is drying. So I tried to leave the sides that we're going to touch um, without paint because if the wood glue can bond from wood to wood without paint, it will be very strong. And then I did throw a couple staples in this when it was done too at the back. I don't think I show that, but it's always a good idea if you have an electric stapler or an air stapler just to give things that extra little bit of support. So now I'm going to go back in and do these little medium and small bees just the same way. I kind of want them to have that same stylized feel to them um, just for the other projects that I'm going to be doing as well. So I'll put the medium bees onto this um, picture that we've made, the Save the Hive picture. So what I did was just draw some smaller versions of the little wings. So draw a bunch. You only have to get one or two that you're happy with, and then you can trace them because this interfacing is so easy to trace through, right? Because you can see through it. Um, vellum would be too just plastic, whatever you have to use for wings. And then again, just using the tweezers to put them all together. So I feel like you guys are okay with kind of these highly detailed crafts. Like I'm always showing you probably all the details and I don't expect anybody to do them all, but would love it if you did and if you shared them with me. But um, I'm just feeling like you guys are appreciating the extra details, but let me know, like, would you ever do this? Is this just too much? But I, I think it was worthwhile. I think the little bees are just super sweet, but you guys let me know. So for the little tiny ones, it just gets way too hard to cut the wings. So I actually used a little heart, a heart shaped punch, like a scrapbooking cardstock kind of punch um, that you get at Michael's or any craft store to do the little wings, just like I did on some of the other bees and some of the other um, videos. So like if you don't have the patience for these stylized wings, that's a much easier route as well. If you just use a punch, a little heart punch, cut it in half, and there's your two wings there as well. And then the fun part, you just get to put them on the frame. I always try and do it really randomly. I know a lot of people would probably be drawn more to do it in a pattern, but I always just find random like ends up being a little bit more pleasing to the eye, but you do whatever suits you best. <laughs> and then here is the final product. I love this message. I worry so much about the bees and the new diseases they're having to fight and all the pesticides. And I wish everyone would just let their dandelions grow and not worry about <laughs> weeds or weed killer and just kind of let the bees have them it's the first flower they can usually find and I know they depend on it so anyway <laughs> that's my message of the day I guess so then I found some of these wooden words I was so excited to find these at Dollar Tree as well I think they're such a great deal for a dollar so I'm just trying to mix up some pink to kind of match the pink of the bags 
just wanting them all to coordinate. So just, I used that, um, I believe it's called cotton candy pink, just the acrylic paint from Dollar Tree, mixed it with some white, and then just a touch of the sunny yellow, or sorry, vivid yellow, just a little touch of it. So then I realized it was really gonna soak into that raw kind of MDF kind of wood that's on the side of them and the back. So I just sealed that with some primer. I know it's an extra step, you don't have to do it. I just knew the paint would dry a little bit darker on that raw wood and really get sucked up by it. So that's why I primed it. And then for this front, for this like faux kind of wood grain finish on the front, um, I just wanted it to look like that, like a pink kind of wash over the wood grain so that you can still see it and see all the little grains in it. So I just did a really thin coat and just followed along with that grain line. And then I thought I would do a little bit of dry brushing with some white just to kind of make it look kind of textured, give it some interest and detail. So just trying to hit all the kind of spots where it would weather. And this is one of the kids brush, one of the kids paint brushes from Dollar Tree. And I really like them. There's a few bristles that come out right when you first use it, but then they're standing up to a lot of wear and tear. They're really good brushes. So then I wanted to make a sunflower to go in front of this little happy sign. So I did the curve of that round wood round um, for the top of the sunflower petal. And then I just drew out a few, pick your best one, and then you just have to trace them. So to go three times around the wood round, you need 60 of these. So I know it's another tedious <laughs> craft, but I feel like if you're watching my channel, you kind of enjoy those detailed um, crafts and kind of the extra little details, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I just mounted two sides of this pizza boxes together so that I would have white on both sides, white cardboard on both sides. And I just used that spray adhesive, that Elmer spray adhesive to put the two sides together. So I have white on each side and I'm not gonna prime these or anything. I'm just gonna go over them with a streaky yellow in the direction of the petal. So it kind of looks like, like some kind of colored grains to the flower. It just kind of gives it some more interest. So just one swipe down the petal. Um, I did count it out so you will need 60 of these petals to go around the flower. I feel like I did about 100 because <laughs> I still had quite a few left over at the end. So if you do this project they are about three quarters wide, three quarters of an inch wide and you would need 60 of them to go around the flower three times. So then the edge of this wood round I'm just going to paint with some black acrylic paint just so it kind of hides the hot glue that I'm gonna use and just kind of has like a shadow effect to it. I feel like if I had painted it yellow, then the hot glue would have shown a lot more. So I wanted one B in the center of each wood round. And this is the last side of the two bags. So I used two of those B bags to do this whole this whole project. So this and the um, welcome to our hive sign. So then I just decoupage them just with some tacky glue because it is kind of that plasticky material. I just thought that might be more durable. So just decoupage them down to the wood round. They stick great. I didn't have any bubbles or anything. It worked out good. And then I'm just gonna start sticking the petals on. So I worked one row at a time and then kind of move into the second row. So you're just kind of working, watching the petals as they dry, that they dry straight up in that glue. And you can kind of follow with these wood rounds. They have like a plywood layer to them. So it actually has a line for you to follow with the hot glue. And then just take your time, get them all glued down. So then I knew this was going to be like a really delicate sort of um, decoration. So to kind of give it a little bit more longevity and something more to stand up, um, I just cut some floral wire. This is from Dollar Tree as well. 
and I just am running some wood glue over top of it and then I'm just sticking this the length of the four petals that the weight kind of sits on when it stands up and then at the end of the wires I just gave it like a little foot of hot glue like a little bead of hot glue and then that will take the weight off of the petals and then again just the very last fun part you get to put on the little tiny bees onto the happy sign and that is it you guys if you made it to the end of this video thank you so much i know it was another long one and if you did make it to the end be sure to leave me a little bee emoji so i just want to thank you guys so much for watching thank you to my crafty tribe for being so loyal and supportive and encouraging you guys are the best just the best. I can't say thank you enough. Be sure to check out that playlist. I love Sunday Funday. You never know what you're going to see. So be sure to check it out. I'm sure my friends have some wonderful videos for you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And if you want to see any close-ups or photos of any of these projects, I'm always posting on Instagram as well now too. So come on over there and interact with me. You're able to send me messages and and share any of your projects too if you're on Instagram. I would just love that. So be sure to connect with me there and we'll talk to you guys soon.